Hey, what's going on guys? Vega here from Serpent X Special Forces. Today we're going to be trying to modify the server power supply on that mining rig right there. In here, I talked about it before, uh, talked about it in previous videos. Uh, it's the Parallel Miner ZXX mining board. I know audio might be a little bit off compared to what you're used to from me. Uh, I'm using the GoPro to record and to take audio. Don't have my external mic hooked up. And there is a bunch of stuff here, as you can see. So we're gonna try to get this guy hooked up onto that server power supply that's in that system. Now I'm not gonna be using all the connections, especially the Molex connection. This is actually revision one. Um, Check out my video about the connections and how to properly hook up everything. But there's a revision too that's out. Hashraptor actually has it. Uh, but we're going to not use all the connections. We're going to use the 24 pin CPU uh, power. These splitters, um, these splitters and main connectors i already been using for my AMD system. But we're going to primarily focus on the board, the 24 pin CPU power, and then we're going to use the splitters or the the main connections that we already have on this system back here the yellow and black to keep everything you know working decent in order we want to minimize downtime uh so i'm gonna get started throw you guys on a time lapse and see how it goes today's video sponsor is parallelminer.com who have a whole host of mining equipment from gpu mining and more they offer power supplies breakout boards extension cables risers, and a whole lot more. They even offer the dummy adapter that can be utilized with the NVIDIA Dev Driver 470.05 to bypass the RTX 3060 restriction, as well as a M.2 B plus M form factor that could be suitable for mining operating systems. You can check them out in the link in the description below. Real quick, I wanna point out something here. This connector, as I mentioned in the video previously, is for SATA. And you can see we already have a SATA connection. They already hooked it up and everything. This Molex port right here is not a typical Molex port. It's the remote port. Talking about how to properly connect this, make sure you check that out before you go trying to connect a Molex connector here uh, because that is not correct. We won't need it, but I'm going to leave that plug in. I might use it for the SATA SSD but uh just want to make sure that it's crystal clear double check and check out the guide they have on their website as well as the video talking about the connections on this motherboard and how to properly use them that i did previously
breakout board, I already hit the power button. You can see the LEDs here. We got 12 volt. Everything looks good to go. I just need to hit the power button. The system is still off. And let's see if you can see the CPU fan. There it is right there. All right, we're coming back on. The EdTech power supply is not coming on. I could technically plug that into, I'm gonna need to plug that into the motherboard on one of the other PCIe slots. Yeah, we're gonna need to use a splitter, hang on. So we're gonna go ahead and power this off. So technically we could power the motherboard with just um, the server power supply, right? So 1200 watts, now that I'm on 240 volt over there, but now the server power, or excuse me, the ATX power supply is not getting uh, a signal to turn on. The good thing is, is I'm using an ASUS B250 motherboard, which has multiple ATX connections that I can utilize or uh, that I can tap into. Just need to be careful here. Again, not the cleanest cable management. It's okay. I'm not judging. Don't think you guys should either. I like to always, when I push, it's very hard to see, but when I try to plug in a connection, I always like to hold the motherboard to make sure that I'm not bowing it too much. Uh, you don't ever want to do that. All right, let's try this again. So let's make sure everything is seated. I'm just going to double check myself here. All right, ATX 24 pin for the uh, power supply, 24 pin for the server breakout board. All right, we're back on, we're back and rolling. Let's try this again. That should start spinning as well. Yep, all right, there we go. And so this motherboard omits having to use a splitter, but they're not, they're not expensive whatsoever. You could get a splitter like this. Let me take it out of the bag real quick. And you could see, by the way, all the dust that came out of this system. I'm gonna have to vacuum over here, which is a uh, good practice. But here's a 24 pin splitter. Um, you can, you know, plug this into your main power supply or, or into your secondary. So I could use this on the ATX, plug this into the motherboard and then plug the server into this. But since the ASUS B250 motherboard, uh, pretty much does all that for me, it's not really necessary. So, but a split, I could use the splitter if I absolutely needed to. All right, we're boom back up. Let's see how, uh, make sure everything's detected in the device manager. You always want to double check that because sometimes when you're messing around with stuff, you can knock the connection loose. That's why I checked all the riser connections um, and everything like that. We're going to move the system back into its main spot real quick, very carefully, because this baby is heavy now. I like to leave a little bit of space between the wall and it. Um, eventually, I'm going to move the A&D system over here on top of everything. All right, so that looks good. Tuck that back in there. Make sure none of the connections are getting too crunched. There we go. I'm looking for a metal shelf that I could put both systems on eventually. Here's my connection for my little LCD here. And that downtime was approximately 15 minutes, which is not bad whatsoever. Um, it could be better, but I'm not, I'm not too worried about it. So yeah, I need a vacuum here in a minute. Let's check the vice manager real quick. And definitely check out the video for how to properly configure or set up your ZSX breakout board from Parallel Miner. All right, so 1080 Ti, 21660 Super, 1660 Ti, 2080, 3060, 3060 Ti, and 3080. Everything is there looking good. Um, I usually bring up hardware info, but I've been using ADA to keep an eye on this screen while this monitor has been primarily off. Eventually here, the hardware monitor will pop up. And I like that because I don't have to turn on this monitor. I can basically 
shut this guy off and yeah there's no power button so i use a pencil got this from an old school i used to work at Thanks. all right so everything's there um i have to keep an eye on gpu zero which is the 3060 and the pcie slot down there i do have a video by the way about what what um a dummy adapter you need uh that will be coming out in the future i just trying to get that time guys thank you for all your patience thank you for everybody that's been supporting the channel and helping out and it looks like we are good to go guys so i'm gonna let this guy this guy's gonna automatically boot up and start running uh usually i have my usb plugged in for hive os but uh, i just wanted to make sure that it's still working in a windows environment and now i can plug my hive os uh usb back in and remotely monitor and everything like that when i have my windows uh, SATA drive plugged in as you saw um, I already have it preset to auto engage got a couple of watchdog parameters in case something fails GPU dies or whatever it will automatically reset so we are good to go so everything's spinning up right now turn this monitor off and I do have to report something to ADA 64 uh, for some reason GPU 6 which is the 3060 at least in ADA's terms for some reason are being silly um and it's showing as what you see there i don't know why but yeah so i'll report that to them in the latest revision or update thank you so much for watching again do not mix the two molex connectors that are on there one's for sata and con con connecting your peripherals one's for the remote uh management i believe uh, i talked about it in my previous video so if i'm saying something wrong just watch my previous video and of course i got all these splitters and connections that we're going to be using for the AMD system. Eventually, this guy's going to get moved onto here when I get some more freaking time. Put this bad boy over there. So that's going to do it for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching me clean my house and move some things around. But that is the installation of the ZSX Parallel Mining Breakout Board. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys have a great day. And you guys take care of yourself. I'll see you in the next one. Make sure you hit the like button on the way out. Subscribe for more content like this. Take care. See you around.